right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the American Dota League. We have Inside Esports up against Pain Gaming International. I'm sorry it took so long to get into this game, but of course we did have the Valve update that did come out for Dota 2. But it should be worth the wait. Two really strong South American teams looking to contend up against one another. We got the Batrider ban immediately from Pain Gaming, but enough about that. Thank you for joining us here on the American Dota League. My name is Mott. With me tonight is a very good friend of mine, NY John. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, and I'm excited to see these two teams. Of course, when you see Pain Gaming International in their lineup, you think DDX. And we've also seen some good plays come out from fullback recently. On the flip side, Insight really need to prove themselves if they want to try and advance in the ADL. They're probably on the verge of elimination, to be honest. So this could turn out to be a big game for both teams as they're pretty desperate for wins. No, you're absolutely right, and I gotta I gotta agree with you on the whole DDX front and and fullback as well. Uh, and fullback was playing as a stand in not too long ago. It looks like they decided to make him a full member, and he's very very good. I also want to mention Aftershock, a great player as well. I don't believe I've seen Zer two before. TT I've seen in the previous games that they've played. Uh, I can't. I'm drawing a blank as to who the other player would be if it's not Zer two. Um, do you have any idea? Or, or I'm drawing a blank right now. Let's see, for Pain Gaming International, it would be Gambetta. That doesn't sound familiar. Mill? No. Zerto. Well, Zer2 is Zerto, but those are the ones on the roster on the website, okay. so right, none well. of them will give it up. <laughs> and Pain Gaming International, they're going to go down the route of the tree and protector. The win rate protector comes out, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen. But we did miss the bands, the Life Sealer and the Nakes band from Inside Esports. You see the Bat Rider and the Darkster band coming out as well. Uh, Inside, they've got two pickups here, but immediately the Treant Protector is going to come out. What do you do to make that Treant Protector's life hard? I think we talked about it in the previous game, but uh, what specifically would you pick here uh, with these uh, chosen uh, allotted slots for Insight? Two supports. I'd pick two strong supports. Um, I'd probably pick the Shadow Demon and... Uh, I don't know which one on top. Visage on top of it. Those would be my two picks because then you have the viability to go to aggressive trial line that could really make its life difficult. Uh, it looks like Inside are not going to take that path as they pick up the Gyrocopter. Of course, Gyrocopter is a highly valued hero, but just want to throw this out here. Pain Gaming, DDX loves OD. OD with Tree and Protector is ridiculous. That hero wins lanes, and Tree and Protector makes people win lanes to the nth degree on top of that. So maybe seeing him coming up soon. Yep, but not with this one. We're going to see the clockwork pick up for the set of Pain Gaming. Insight's going to go for the Keeper of the Light. Uh, that does mean we might see the OD band out. And OD's uh, just been kind of picked a lot recently, as we saw DreamHack Summer, of course. And uh, I think OD, definitely a great hero. The living Armor, just so good on a lot of heroes, including the Weaver as well. It's just, I mean, kind of any hero that could play aggressively in a solo lane. Uh, something along those lines. The Alchemist band coming out from the side of Insight. Interesting band there. Pain Gaming, they're going to go ahead and get a band. But yeah, I mean, we'll see if they want to pick up the OD for DDX. DDX is famous for uh, also his Invoker play. I'm not sure if any of you guys remember, but DDX is Invoker play. And actually, Aosin was the one that alluded me to this. I, I completely forgot about DDX's Invoker play, but uh, really just fantastic. But uh, Fullback is the picker, and uh, he has not yet picked Invoker for the side of Pain Gaming, and uh, probably won't see it this time around either, just because you really never see him uh, in game. So. As much as I would like to see that, I doubt we will see it. The Phantom Assassin band from Insight and another band coming out from Pain Gaming. Just banning out some uh, carries at this point in time. It looks like Pain Gaming, they kind of have an idea of what they want to go for. They're not too concerned about the bands from Insight. No. So, oh, they banned it for themselves? So they could, I mean, I don't see why they would ban it if DDX is the one that plays it. But oh well, I guess, you know, they're not going to play it. You know the thing about South American teams too is there a lot of copycat Dota down there, so uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if Insight runs similar line of two pain gaming. Yeah, lots of regions do that, and they feed off of each other's strategies. And these teams are going to have better familiarity with each other than some of the other teams in this tournament. So, not having this first pick out of the banning stage could mean they don't want to let them have the OD because he is that strong of a laner. And adding him to heroes like Keeper of the Light and Gyrocopter who can keep procking that aura and benefiting greatly oh, would be yes. a problem. And yes. you're right. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited. And we'll see how DDX can do with it. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, John. I'm sorry. I just got really excited. I need to calm down. I need to drink no, some water. Now I'm super depressed. Uh, <laughs> you got the pick right. I get it wrong. Today Listen, was a sad day. I've got a sixth sense about these things, except for the one time. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that, though. But um... You're the South American whisperer. We have it. <laughs> 
uh, the Ruin pick is going to be pretty cool against Invoker. It always is. It's kind of like rolling the dice and you see what kind of spells you get. It, uh, this is cool because Invoker Clockwork is naturally a good combo if it's an Exhort Invoker. And that's pretty much the only viable Invoker in the game right now. Yeah, Cross Box has been mm -hmm. nerfed really hard. You can't do that. It's just not. I mean... I don't want to say you can't, it's just not viable in a competitive scene with very strong players on both sides. I mean, if, if DDX does that, I'd be shocked. I expect him to see Exhort, uh, Quas Exhort especially, I mean, and, and Cold Snap's going to be really nice to have up against that Magnus, I think, and Magnus should have a tough time here, um, and Magnus you don't see a whole lot. I think a lot of people sort of, just once that ner uh, nerf came out, you know, to that reverse polarity, people were like, eh, it's not that good anymore. But I think he's still a great hero in team fighting situations, especially when you have the gyrocopter call down and things of that nature. But uh, the Crystal Man coming out from Pain Gaming, this is very, very, I want to say, defensive in terms of just a tri lane that's coming out from Pain Gaming International with Crystal Man and Treant. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if anyone told Insight that 6.78 happened because their lineup looks like it would have been a lineup we saw two months ago mm -hmm. and it would have been amazing then but right now it's kind of good it definitely has a lot of potential anytime right. you have a hard lockdown with a gyrocopter you can win games uh, but Magnus is going to have a difficult time in the middle lane like you said and uh, the fact that there's a clockwork as well, if Magnus doesn't get a BKB or an early blink, clock makes Mag's life difficult uh, Crystal Maiden is a cool pickup. I love seeing the support. We talked about this between games, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else was playing it, another team, and uh, just having that lockdown in the slow, uh, it's frustrating for enemies to work against, and she kind of does compensate a little bit for Tree and Protector's lack of lane ability, and also, Tree and Protector has good base damage, so with the Frostbite, he can get a couple whacks in, and at least it's something. It's yeah. better than the alternative of having you know, a risky support pick. Yeah, no, I 100% I agree with you, especially about Insight and how they're back two months ago, 6.77C or something like that. This could have been a good lineup, or even before that, 6.76, just like, this would have been a good lineup. Like, Keeper of the Light with his area of effects, just like, not nerfed, really good. You know, Magnus, not nerfed, Gyrocopter, not nerfed, but they go with the Lich pickup as the last pickup. And that's got to be solo off lane, unless they want to go aggressive tri lane on the side of Insight, which they can. Uh, that is something that is available to them. But with the tree and protector, like we talked about, and Crystal Man's rather squishy early on in the game, but that's alleviated with Living Armor. So, you know, there's there's always that. As um, I do want to wait and see what the last pickup here is for Pain Gaming before we, you know, see actually what they want. This should be a carry pickup. I mean, it's got to be. But Invoker, I'm waiting to see DDX and how well he plays. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I think we're in for a treat tonight, I hope. But, uh, I believe Insight is actually winless right now in the, uh, group stage of ADL. I could potentially be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they have no win. So Insight looking to pick up their first one here against a very strong lineup from Pain Gaming International and a lineup that I think, uh, a lot of people might underestimate here. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting lineup. It's clever. It has a lot of damage output from abilities. They need something to kind of anchor that with good physical damage output. So uh, look for a hero, potentially. There's a physical damage output hero, Sven. Yep. And this is not going to be like the Sven we saw from Fear last game round. This is going to be the carry Sven. That's right. So we're going to jump into the game just a minute and wait to see uh, all the heroes get picked up here in just a moment. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining the American Dota League. Uh, once again, I'm Mott. With me is NY John. This is game two of the night. We have four games for you tonight here, and uh, we're looking to see if Insight can pick up their first one. They've got a lineup that could uh, potentially really work uh, well together, but Pain Gaming playing their classic heroes. Uh, Aftershock, really great on that clockwork. Uh, of course, DDX on the Invoker we talked about already, and Sven is just a, a great player altogether. So, going to jump into the game in just a moment, so hold on a second, guys, as we get to the in-between games segment here. Uh, but in, in terms of lineups right now, I mean, Pain Gaming, you see they picked all of their heroes already. They're ready to go. Uh, Insight taking a while to think about what they want to do, where they want to lane everything here. And, uh, well, we'll see actually really what happens in just a moment as we will jump into the game. Once again, I want to make sure you guys go ahead and follow us on uh, Twitter, which is at American Dota. Check out twitch.tv slash American Dota League if you're watching Klein. And make sure you pick up a ticket in the Dota 2 store. So please check that out as well. And we will get a pause. Of course, uh, Insight is waiting and just trying to figure out their lineup. But in the meantime, we're going to introduce Pain. We've got Fullback on the Sven. TT will be on the Treant Protector. DDX on his Invoker. Zertu will be on the Crystal Maiden. And Aftershock on the Clockwork. 
And once that uh, full lineup from Insight goes, you can go ahead and introduce them if you'd like. <clears throat> I guess I could guess at it right now if you want to. Yeah. Uh, we can see already Plock is going to be playing the keyboard light. Deeks is going to be on Rubik, SS on Magnus. And the stand-in pop-in, hmm. going to take the Lich, I'm going right. to guess, and Moon Madness is going to take the... Gyro. The carry gyro, if mm. I had to guess. All right, if, if that was so, you're saying Poppin's going to be on the lich and Moon Madness is going to be on the gyro. Yeah, uh, that's I'm gonna what I'm going to roll with. I'm yeah, I'm sure. I, I mean, I don't know what the repercussion will be, but I'm I'm scared of it. Uh, but going back to this pain in lineup, uh, they're very well rounded, and a lot of times we overlook the defensive nature of a team and in this game of course since Trillion Protector is here we're not doing so but you have to take into account the war cry I talked about this last game and when you have a carry Sven he's getting even more levels at a quicker rate so getting that armor up from war cry you have a clockwork who's innately tanky Trillion Protector's in the game Invoker has good escapability later in the game but early on he might be susceptible to damage so being able to be the beneficiary of all that from his team is going to allow him to really get a lot of damage out in these fights if things go well. And they should. I mean, he should, with Exhort built, get last hit to middle lane. Magnus has a possibility of killing him at level 6 if things go well, but we'll have to exactly wait and see how that... Guess what, buddy? Goes. Guess what, buddy? I'm wrong. You were wrong. <laughs> Poor John. Getting oh, it wrong. You know why I was wrong is because Moon Madness has that peace symbol next to his name. That's right. And I couldn't see it because they didn't load. And in fact, they swapped heroes after the picks too. So, <laughs> oh, was, okay. So you're rigged. right for a second at least. Okay, I got you. I see what you're saying. All right. Well, we are still paused. A, uh, so I guess you could call it a tactical pause as they try to figure out their heroes. This is like what happens when you're playing like a pub game and and nothing against Insight, but when you try to just figure your heroes out and your lineup out, and you're just like, well, what do you want to play? Well, we need to pick a hero here. Uh, do you want to swap? No, I, w I, I don't know. And it's just like at this point in time, they're just trying to figure out what they want to do on Insight side. Pain's waiting. They're ready to go. Uh, but I, I'm really hoping Insight surprises us. I mean, but this is this is Dota that is almost entirely predictable, you know, except for the Lich pickup, which does add a bit of uh, unpredictability to it. And the Rubik as well, depending on what he can steal. But, I mean, this is, like you said, what we would have seen in the past, like, two months of Dota. But it, it's it's right now is not really what the meta's about, I don't think, anyway. So. Yeah, I agree entirely. And, in fact, if I'm paying int, uh, you have a... Paying int has a more aggressive lineup, really, probably because of the clockwork. And the fact that Sven at level 6 does a whole lot of damage. But... I almost want to force this clock into a 1v1 against Lich because he would absolutely destroy that. However, the cost would be putting your trial in, which isn't that good, but it's not that bad because they ended up picking a carry that has a disable. So he's compensating for Treant a little bit and maybe force that into the aggressive trial and see how it goes. However, going up against the Keeper Light would be difficult, but getting that clock versus Lich matchup would be wonderful. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to say I, I honestly think they could do that aggressive trial lane and be okay. I, I think they could be just fine. I don't think they will. I think they want to keep it a little bit safe, but yeah. um, you can see they're, they're already heading bottom. But uh, So the team's already introduced. We're going to see where everybody heads right now. I, I do like seeing when people purchase up smoke. I think that's a really cool feature, and they actually changed that within the last patch, of course, making sure that the wards and the courier don't show up anymore. But... Valve doing very, very, uh, very good job showing off to the spectators of Dota as well as the casters catering to our whim, which is very nice to have. Five man aggression coming out from Pain down to the bottom lane. They want to stop the uh, wards from getting put down, but since this is a solo lich and he went boots first, that's not going to happen. Uh, boots first. Hmm. Okay. Up in the top lane. So Gyrocopter going for a straight with a Wraith Band. No pooled regen. Um, just a tango of his own. Sentry's going for the Keeper of the Light. Deeks, he's got a smoke as well as Observer Wards and some just nice regen. Two clarities as well on top of that. Looking at DDX, going for the standard Blades of Attack. He's going to go for a point into Exort, but he needs to get level uh, either 2 or 3 to get that 1 point in Quas. So he's got to be careful until then because he won't have that regen. But I think he should have an okay time, uh, assuming he avoids the Shockwave. And then Magnus going instead of for the Tangos, just goes straight for the Healing Salve. He'll try to get his bottle as early as possible, but... Uh, some interesting item choices for Insight. I'm not really sure about this boots pickup here, but at the same time, I'm not going to question it a whole lot. So, I like it. I mean, he's not going to step into lane 
for a long time. He's just going to deny and try and get that wave back towards him. And since they don't have wards to take away the pull, it's not really going to happen too effectively. So picking out the boots is going to make him a little bit more mobile. Let's be honest, if he had extra tangos, if he gets caught, he's still going to die. The tangos yeah. aren't going to save his life. It's so true. It's a good point. At least he has the mobility to try and get away from a slow Crystal Maiden. I mean, 280 base move speed. She is slow. And that's one of the major downsides to that hero overall. So taking advantage of that a little bit. And I just also wanted to mention that that whole time you're talking about the pregame strategy pause brought me back to Dota All-Stars where some teams had hero specialists that they would sub in if they picked certain heroes. Of course, that's definitely not the case for this game, but that's what it made me think of. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's always nice to think about past Dota All-Stars, what it could have been, what it still is to this day. Great sequel in Dota 2 right now, but we're focused on this game primarily, and uh, SS is doing really well. He's got four last hits right now, three, of course, going for the Sven up in that uh, bottom lane. Looks like down there he's doing okay, but six last hits now going for SS, so he's doing really well in this mid lane. Was unsure about the matchup, but of course it still is early on. I mean, you don't even have Invoke yet for DDX. Uh, should be getting it soon right now. He's taking a lot of damage from these creeps. He's tanking them up, as you can see, but he should be getting most of the CS here. And, uh, yeah, he will do so. So now he's up to 7 as he tanks that creep wave, of course. I believe Shockwave was used to push that in just a little bit. Going Shockwave Skewer. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Aftershock, he's got uh, the creep wave pretty close. And they're using Flat Cannon, so that's going to even push it further. There are no wards, so Moon Madness will go ahead and pull. That's a stack pull, by the way. Um, so nicely done there. Generally, I like to see the chain pull, if you can, on the Dire side. It's pretty difficult to accomplish, but it's a, a little bit more effective, I think, because you're not going to clear this entire stack, as you can see, with a stack here, unless it double pulls, which it might, and looks like it will. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. nope, never mind. Uh, I'm completely wrong, so it doesn't d double pull. So, nine last hits going for SS, and uh, DDX, well, really what it's going to come down to is, can he just get the levels, and can he get, of course, the, uh, the last hits as well? I mean, especially on someone with such low base damage, um, we'll have to see how it goes. He's taking a lot of damage from that shockwave too. Yeah, we saw an early living armor coming out on a creep top lane. I'm not sure if that was just a big misclick or not, but interesting strategy from Painant early on here. Uh, we also see it looks like Painant are going to bring this lane a little bit forward. I'd say uh, it's pretty straightforward that in terms of if either team wanted to dive, Painant have a more successful group to do it just because they're going against a Lich as opposed to a Clockwork. So you can see them pushing out this lane for the purpose of trying to get under this tower and kill off the Lich because Lich is going to frustrate them by denying the creeps. Uh, even if he's not getting as much experience as maybe Clockwork is poking into lane, he still is hindering the potential farm of Sven. He's doing a good job of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it is just a little bit more annoying. You're going to have to pretty much pull on cooldown here. And uh, you can see Zer2, you were talking about how they wanted to kill the Lich, but the Lich has to back off right now. But that's a double damage Crystal Maiden, but for only for another few seconds. Meanwhile, Smoke Gang coming mid for Insight, and then want to try to pick off DDX here. Of course, no point in Wex yet. I don't think a Ghost Walk would save him anyways at this point. He's got two Claws of Attack, so he's doing all right in terms of damage now. He's got a lot of base damage with that uh, Exhort Essence going. His Phase Boots are done. They just get there, by the way, so he's going to be pumping out a lot of damage. And he does have this Cold Snap as well, but... I mean, this is a very patient gang coming out from Insight, and they want to wrap all the way around, perhaps, maybe. Um, and I'm not sure. This is a very interesting choice. This is not getting pushed back, and I think they could have went earlier. So I'm not 100% sure. There's the Cold Snap going in SS right now. He'll back off, as, of course, he did miss uphill right now. So DDX out of the Cold Snap. There's nothing left for him there. But it looks like, actually, they wanted to go top on Aftershock, but he should be just fine behind his tower here. He's got to purchase a bottle as well. And uh, 21 last hits going for the side of fullback down in that bottom lane. He's doing very well. But the Gyrocopter only sitting at 19, so he's not too far behind as well. Uh, just going straight into that Helm of the Iron Will. He wants to get that Helm of the Dominator as fast as possible, it looks like, just to get at least some lifesteal, of course, and get that Ancient stack going as well on the Dire side. So uh, that's got to come soon. Meanwhile, Invoker is starting to really pick it up in the last hit category. He's got 23 right now, tied with fullback here. So... A uh, very passive game so far, and you expect that, I think, out of these two lineups, you know, until they can get some uh, levels here. And the Living Armor's going to come mid, but not, not really a whole lot to look at here, at least not yet anyway. Yeah, both teams going that safe trial lane. It, it does kind of build up a slow early game, but you'd expect that to break at some point because there's a clockwork in play. There's a Magnus just want to get the most out of the reverse polarity once he hits level 6, which is going to be shortly here. So uh, maybe middle lane 
an attempt. We've already seen the supports try and roam once as they're pushing back clockwork now. Maybe if they can time this and come in middle, they can get something going on DDX. We talked about how strong Invoker is going to be. If they can keep his levels away, Invoker is directly relying on those levels to output that damage, of course. The way he's uh, set up and the way he works overall. So that would be huge if they can kind of starve him for experience. And we do see uh, Gyrocopter opting to pick up an I think you were just talking about this. Helmet Iron Will to get mm -hmm. the stacks going early. That's a, a very interesting first choice. I'm uh, surprised he didn't pick up Boots first, but there he goes the Boots and a Sage's Mask as well. So he, he got the early Helmet the Iron Will, maybe just to make him a little bit more tanky, which makes sense against the Flare, get that uh, armor going, that magic resistance. Just a little bit higher, I believe. No, wait, I'm probably wrong. Never mind, that's not what I meant. And <laughs> for some reason, I thought that was physical damage. Anyways, yeah. down the bottom lane. Bottom. Warcry's going, and Plot, he's got to back way off here, and now they look like they want to just go ahead and try to push this. Fullback and throw maybe a Stormbolt, if he wants to storm hammer, I guess is the term. They keep calling it Stormbolt, I don't know why, but Fullback is going to have his treads done. He's got some money as well, and uh, they're tanking up this tower right now, and there's not a whole lot Plot can do here. Uh, Zertu, setting at level 4 right now. If we look at experience in terms of who's winning in supports, uh, dire side not getting quite as much experience as of course the radiant is but that's because there was that early gank going on meanwhile tp rotation down to the bottom lane they want to try to stop this push moon madness is here of course with the side of deeks and they're going to throw it illuminate warcry is going to go it's going to hit fullback right in the face he's going to throw a storm hammer that's going to only hit deeks right now deeks taking some damage there's the crystal nova deeks very close oh the salve might save his life the trio protector using that leech seed. There's Telkinesis fullback. He's in some trouble. That's going to be first blood. Yes, no. It goes to the tower. So it will be first blood, but it goes to the tower. Now coming through. Magnus, not enough mana for the RP, but he just takes down the Crystal Maiden. No time flat. So some nice rotations coming in from Insight. TT is getting chased. He's got that smoke of deceit available if necessary. If he's still trying to get away, it's a slow, pe uh, slow speed chase. Excuse me, coming through into the jungle right now. Oh, they're going to cut him off too. It looks like. Wait, no, they backed off. No, the Magnus. He completely went the opposite direction of TT, but now the Magnus might be in some trouble, even though he has that DD and reverse polarity available. So TT, uh, he will actually make it out of there alive. That did give some room for the Clockwork to be more aggressive, and but it also got 44 last hits going for Poppin, by the way. And uh, so really good action going for Insight with those TP rotations. Yeah, that was a phenomenal Insight fight. Uh, going uh, pretty poorly for Pain in uh, because of their actions, trying to dive there. The cool thing was this, that Insight TPing two hero sets here too, they had no idea they were both there. They caught a glimpse of that Rubik and the Illuminate hit at the same time that Fullback wanted to initiate, and he kind of was pot committed being that deep, so he really just persisted and tried to get something out of it, but of course it went horribly wrong for them, and you are talking about the experience beforehand, like it was going decently for Pain Int and not so well for Insight because of their movement, but that time it cashes, they are able to cash in on a little bit of overzealous nature, and any kind of experience lead is going to be very nice when we're talking about abilities like Chain Frost and like the Steel from Rubik that are going to come up eventually and be a huge factor in teamfights. Absolutely, and now SS, he's got an Invis rune, and Fullback needs to get out. He's going to Warcry, he needs to use that TP or at least just get back to his Tier 1 tower. SS is still looking with that Invis rune, there's no Sentry Ward around here. There's a smoke up on TT and Zer too, but they're not looking to fight a Magnus with reverse polarity at this point. They have no idea he's there. Uh, they would get revealed if they moved even an inch closer, but they know that Lich is there now. So now they know that something's not right because they didn't move, and it wasn't like that Lich got there any closer. Now a TP coming in. Looks like the Invoker's here. No, no, it's Aftershock as Invoker's still mid. Invoker, I th was thinking he was going to go for a Midas. He's got 2,100 gold, so I'm not sure if he wants to pick that up or not. Uh, but... It looks like SS is going to back off. Head to the mid lane right now. That invis is going to wear off. Top lane, 57 last hits. Now going for Poppin. The Ring of Aquila is done. He's got his uh, power treads as well. Those are on agility. And uh, Cold Snap's going to go from DDX onto the low ground. Doing some decent damage, by the way. SS did not skew away, but he'll just take that to the face. He's got full bottle charges, so he's okay. Bottom lane's getting pressured here with the War Cry. Might be able to take this tower. Clock's going to go ahead and throw that Frost Blast going in. And now they have to back off as another TP coming in. This one from SS looking for the Skewer. Nice Frost Blast coming in. And there's going to be a, a nice use of that Storm Bolt as well. Excuse me, uh, Frost Bite. He's going to mana up. Just make sure he's got enough for that uh, Reverse Polarity. He doesn't have that Blink Dagger, so he can't get close enough. Living Armor's going to go, but it's not going to help. Shockwave will fly. That'll pick up the kill for SS. 3 to nothing now for the side of Insight. Meanwhile, though, DDX is just getting farm. And this is exactly what you don't want in an Invoker, just getting in levels of experience and gold on top of that. So he's doing very Top well lane. for himself. 
Top lane, call down's going, but popping. that's not going to save his life. The aftershock hit the uh, hook shot as well, and he's going to get the kill with the tower picking it up. Tower's in deny range, by the way. He's going to go ahead and deny that. Nicely done there in the top lane, and they'll pick up their first kill of the game, and it is a hand of might is done for that invoker. I was wondering when he was going to get it. He will pick it up now uh, at 10 minutes into the game, which is pretty good timing for an invoker in the mid lane, I think. And uh, he's level 9, that's just going to only expedite his leveling into the later stages of the game. So Sven's going to go for that more mask as well. Yeah, and that result top lane is horrible. Now we see Aftershock with a haste is going to go on top of SS. Oh, and SS is just going to skewer up onto the high ground. He's going to use that TP and just say, I don't want any part of this. Flare's going to go a little too late, however, but uh, nice little play from Aftershock coming out and doing some damage there and uh, getting a lot accomplished. I mean, taking down that Gyrocopter, and now DDX has eclipsed that Gyrocopter in terms of CS at this point. There is a Sentry Ward down mid. They're going to go ahead and counter ward that ward that was on the high ground there, so... Mid's a uh, point of contestation right now, and uh, they did take that tier 1 tower bottom, I believe. Now they want to go ahead and, I think, dive on Plock, but that war cry popped a little too late. Maybe they just want to go ahead and push a little bit more, but... Yeah, well, what I was going to say is Aftershock now is level 8, so he's the same level as Magnus just because of that solo kill on Gyrocopter. That is exactly what you want to happen if you're Clockwork, because you're able to catch up after... A... Uh, I mean, not a bad start because he survived and he has 22 CS, but a mediocre start. It wasn't going super well for him and now it is so he's going to be able to rotate around the map freely he has arcane boots as well and he's going to try and find some opportunities for his team he was able to bully away the magnus there middle lane so anytime you could send a hero back to his well that's a pretty good result for you and uh, being able to create space through the clockwork is just going to further help the invoker and the spend get their farm going Absolutely. So, and, and this is kind of around the time when we see Pain International start to get, you know, their team fight going a little bit on top of their farm with, of course, DDX is when they have some levels up on Aftershock, he starts roaming around the map using that hook shot to great effect. It's only level one hook shot. It's still rather good, though. I mean, the range is still nice to have. SS, of course, has that reverse polarity. I don't believe he's used it once, but he can. Trian, of course, is going to scout out that bottom invis rune. He's going to see that SS is going to go ahead and grab that. So TT is going to warn his team that there is a mag with an invis rune in his bottle right now. So they're going to back off, make sure they've got sentries on the map, and maybe even catch him out if he runs out of position here. Um, now they, that's what they should do anyway. I'm not sure if uh, they did actually see that, but they should have anyways. Now on mid lane right now, you can see that invis rune going for SS right now. They don't want to... There's the sentry going down. There's the cold snap. There's the burst polarity. But he gets, of course, that sunstrike off in time. SS taking a lot of damage. The Keeper of the Light Illuminate is going to go. DDX, it's in trouble. There's going to be the deafening blast. Can they get SS? SS taking a lot of damage. Will he fall? Yes, DDX will pick him up just in time. Tower doing some damage to him. He can ghost walk if necessary. But now he's just going to go quas. Get some regen, and that, oh man, that Fade Bolt I thought was going to give him the kill, but they will throw the Living Armor as well. Meanwhile, Aftershot going in, looks like he used that hook shot to pick off the kill on the Keeper of the Light, as I did miss that. And now the score is tied up, 3-3, three to three, four heroes mid, and Sven is still farming away with, of course, that Mask of Madness. Level 2 into Warcry at one point in Great Cleave, that's going to help a little bit to get his farm going. But man, that fight mid, very close for pain, but they do pick it up. And that Deafening Blast transition from DDX was amazing. I mean, the fact he was able to get it on both heroes really ensured his ability to get out there. And that wasn't the easiest thing to do because they're both within base contact of him at uh, different angles. So you can see DDX has a lot of experience on this Invoker. And it's already showing 13 minutes into the game. His farm is through the roof. He has a four staff on top of him now as well. So going to be able to disengage pretty effectively. The four staff is so important going up against a Gyrocopter. Uh, just being able to get away from that call down uh, as that does create the natural kind of center of the fight where you don't want to be uh, that's going to be the wheelhouse where they're going to try and get the reverse polarity where they're going to throw the chain frost off and of course the call down damage itself so it's very dangerous if he gets caught in a bad location and force staff is going to help him prevent himself from doing that yeah and on top of the wex movement speed as well you know and and just he'll be i think uh He'll be in the back for the most part of these fights if he can help it. I mean, especially when he's got those four spirits as well. Uh, but there is a lot of AoE damage like we talked about earlier. And you talked about the call down and the reverse polarity and whatnot. But um, at this point in time, if they don't slow his farm down, then they're going to they're gonna need, they're gonna need something to stop, of course, that just pure magic damage that he has with that output with, of course, the exhort. 
uh, and the quads on top of that, when he gets the Wex Essences as well, you'll, you'll see a lot of different spells coming out from his repertoire. Uh, and really look forward to that level 4 Invoke, which is going to take a while to get to, but, you know, he's doing his best right now. He's been using his Minus on cooldown. So, um, he's also trying to take this Tier 1 Tower mid, and it looks like no one's really coming here to stop this. I mean, the Keep of the Light can spam uh, Illuminate all he wants, but at the, at the end of the day, he's got Tranquils, and that's pretty much it. Now, top lane, they're looking for a gank on Aftershock. Telekinesis Skewer, there's no Tier 1 Tower here. He's going to Cogs himself away. Hookshot maybe to a Creep or something, or a Hero, if he can get to it in time. Uh, so now it actually looks like he wants to fight Hookshot in right now. He doesn't have Cogs. Deke's taking a lot of damage. Nice use of that living armor. Aftershot gonna take the full load of that damage. Frostbite on SS. Then Sunstrike just missing on Deeks right now. Meanwhile, some Frost Blast is going. There's the Chain Frost. They need to spread. DDX taking damage. The Overgrowth going. They're taking so much damage from that Chain Frost. What are they doing? TT has to back off. He's gonna fall right now. A one for one trade as the Lich does go down. The Shockwave just gonna hit Zer too, but he's gonna be able to escape just fine. And that Chain Frost, I think, saved Insight's life there. Because if that doesn't go off, if that only bounces like not even once, then they probably lose a bunch of heroes. But DDX tried staying with the Treant. Treant had to overgrowth, and they were in a bad position. And the fight ends up kind of being a little bit of a trade there. Yeah, two things. First off, DDX could have stopped that Chain Frost if he just had backed up. But instead, he wanted to push in. So he essentially killed the Treant Protector, uh, which is a little bit of a misplay on his yeah. behalf, of course, because he does have the Force left. So he could have gotten back in in a quick fashion. And, of course, Exhort Invoker doesn't really worry about... Uh, range as much because you do have extra abilities that have the long cast range. But the other thing is, wow, Trian Protector is broken. They were used to reverse polarity and they couldn't kill a Clockwork. After Clockwork had used Cogs and everything else. That was ridiculous. It just, wow. Yeah. And I mean, it's, they, they used a lot of abilities in that uh, reverse polarity as well. But at, at the same time, you got to think about the nerf that had uh, happened to the reverse polarity. It's at 50 damage right now. So there is that. But at the same time, I mean, yeah, Living Armor pretty much saved his life there. There's no question about that. Um, yeah. The, I mean, a one target reverse polarity has to get you a kill. Um, and it just didn't there. Magnus, it, it's a 120 second cooldown at level one. So that's a big expenditure to throw it out there willy nilly. And I know they thought they were going to get that kill, but it really oh, does. Smoke gank, the sun strikes Ooh. going. They know this is happening right now. Pop in, the Crystal Nova's going to go. Spell was stolen. Call down's going to fly. Crystal Nova Frostbite. There's the freezing field immediately canceled with the telekinesis. Zerg 2 in some trouble. Invoker's going to pick up the kill with the meatball, though, on the side of Moon Madness. Now they're going to continue to chase. It looks like they want something here. And now it looks like everybody from inside's going to back off. And uh, the stack, of course, did go down, so I think Jaro got most of that farm before. Oh, now they want to fight. Zer2 in some trouble. Living Armor might be going. Nope, Fade Bolt's going to get that kill on the Crystal Maiden. There's the Overgrowth going on Poppin. Where's the rest of the following damage, though? Aftershock looking for something. Reverse Polarity's going to go on to fallback. Not a whole lot of damage. Jinx is going to go down. So is DDX. Two traded right now. Block's going to fall. Two for two trade as it stands. Buyback going in. Hookshot, no. Aftershock, no. Right on top of fallback. And now Poppin getting away as they cannot focus anybody down right now. Cogs are going to go. Aftershock's going to back out. Trying to build his mech. He's got enough money for the recipe that he needs to buy in case he does go down. There it goes. The recipe bought up. But uh, a little, a few misplays coming out from Pain International there. Zer2 pushing too aggressively. But yeah, I mean, that was, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and my big problem with that fight is that you have Invoker die, and he's dead for uh, 30 seconds or so with Midas off cooldown. He didn't even use Force Step. I was clicked on him the whole fight. I was expecting DDX to do some super swag move like Force Step towards the creep wave. Midas the creep, and then get a last hit on a hero, and then maybe die afterwards. But instead, it went the other way, and he just ate a shockwave and died. But uh, I really wish he was able to either buy back so he can get that Midas cooldown used right away and then maybe have the potential of throwing down a Sunstrike and getting one of those kills that he didn't actually cash in on. But that didn't happen either. So the fight was less than ideal for Pain, and it's now 7-6. And Insight, I mean, they have a leg to stand on. We keep talking like, you know, this Invoker is going to come in and just absolutely destroy them. But he is going to be susceptible to the damage coming out from a gyrocopter which if gyro can get his items built up we've seen what can happen even late game when the gyrocopter has had a rough game he can do miraculous things so it's going to come down to poppin who's the stand-in he's going for the bkb first which is reasonable and he's only 70 gold away from that mm -hmm. but after that is he going to go for an mkb is he going to go for a little bit of a more risky item or is he going to play conservative with something like a manta i'm really curious to see what he wants to do there I think most invokers right now, and, and I say most, so not necessarily Poppin, probably go for that MKB after they finish up that helm as well. 
But uh, we'll have to see. I mean, that, that extra damage coming out would be pretty detrimental to the Invoker, who right now doesn't have a whole lot in terms of health. I mean, he's got 1,062. He's got the Force Staff, which gives you that HP regen. He, of course, has the HP regen from the Quas Essences, but and the bonus strength as well on top of that if he puts it down. But he's got to be careful. I mean, he's only got that Force Staff. He will Force <laughs> Staff away, and he makes the Reverse Polarity miss. SS not even juking it. DDX knew it was coming immediately. He knew the cast animation was there, and he's like, nope. Not standing inside that, so that's a reverse polarity gone, and they can, uh, there's all five here for the side of pain. They cannot be afraid, they don't need to be afraid to fight this. Of course, they are getting pushed in, so they have to wait for the creep wave, and fullback, uh, with his cleave actually maxed right now, is getting some decent farm. He's got the BKB himself, he's also got the Mask of Madness, so heroes are starting to come into their own. 8,500 net worth for fullback, you see 8,500 as well for the Invoker. And 7,500 for the gyro, so he's not too far behind, but the gold and the experience graph, 5,000 and almost 5,000 gold for uh, pain right now, and I don't know, I I'm not sure if this gyrocopter can really, on his own, I mean, they do have the uh, reverse polarity though, they've got a lot of that magic damage as well, so they, they certainly, I think, could come back from this, but... Inside, I think they need to choose their fights carefully, and they need to make sure they don't get picked off like they've been getting picked off with Aftershock. Yeah, this is kind of a lineup from inside that's all in on Gyrocopter as he is their core as he's getting jumped on top lane, but a couple BKBs in play will let him get home safely. Uh, they need him to output all of their damage. They have a little bit of magic damage coming in from Lich, a little bit of magic damage coming in from Magnus, but really it comes down to Gyrocopter, what he can and cannot do will determine the game for them. And that's what happens when you don't pick a, a secondary damage dealer. We have Magnus oh, who's a team fight facilitator in. and they're jumping. Oh man, and Plock is just gonna go down, but he does get that Chain Frost off in time, and now Zerg 2 has gotta get away. They use that mech, Aftershock, trying to get away from everything. That Chain Frost doing a bit of damage, coupled up with, of course, that Illuminate. Now Aftershock's gonna get stunned, Overgrowth going on pop, and as you can see, there's the Skewer. They will take Aftershock down. The cooldown is going right now. There's the Frostbite, and there's the Freezing Field. He wants this kill. Zerg 2 is gonna get it. No, a double kill, using, of course, uh, the Familiars there. He does buy back, no, excuse me, the uh, Aftershock buys back. There's gonna be the hook shot coming in out of SS. He's taking a lot of damage. The Frostbite is well and after shotgun is gonna get a kill triple kill for the invoker in the meantime as he picks up a kill on the keeper of the light who was trying to get out of there a full team wipe and now ddx with that triple kill now you know he's starting to get into play he had that blink tag he's got the four set he's got the mobility and he's got the levels except he's only got one point in wex but it doesn't even matter in the end and zer 2 with some great plays crystal maiden this is like a no fear CM. She's just running in and getting the freezing field off in every single team fight. Doesn't care about the fact that, you know, she can die from flat cannon damage uh, because she's only sitting at 900 health, really, and they're not going to throw the living armor on Crystal Maiden. If they are, they're probably not doing too well in the fight. Top lane, fullback's in a little bit of trouble, though. Yeah, fullback is actually going to pick up a huge kill with that Mask of Madness, and of course he had the God Strength going as well. Uh, picking up Deeks, and now Plox is like, uh, don't want to fight that. And after sh or fullback was just like, uh, I'm not going to chase that, I'm just going to continue to farm. So, down to the bottom lane, meanwhile, Poppin, he's going to get, of course, Cold Snap, taking a lot of damage. Leech Seed and DDX, and going to go ahead and take that kill, no problem. Now they're going to take the tier 2 tower as well. And so what turned out to be, you know, a nice little lead for Pain International is starting to become a pretty big lead, if you look at the graphs real quick. Yeah, I mean, that that escalated quickly. Yeah, this could probably be a Roche soon, since they have so much map control. There is vision near the Roche pit from the Dire team, but I don't think the Radiant are too concerned about Insight or trying to engage on them, just because... They haven't won any of these team fights. What's the reason they should be really worried? And now Insight's showing Magnus top. I would go straight to the Roche pit if I were them, but they look a little bit hesitant or reluctant to do so. Instead, Fullback's going to try and solo kill this, and it's going to be easy. Look at this damage. Oh, man. And DDX didn't even get that. That last hit from Fullback was enough, but that Sunstrike just... Uh... Well, that was spot on, obviously, with the Stormbolt going in Stormhammer. Excuse me, I apologize for getting the names wrong. And I almost want to say that Payne's a little bit greedy for doing the smoke. They're just trying to catch somebody out, and they might even catch out Poppin'. And they, like, see him there, and they've got Hookshot. I mean, you could keep him in that position, and, and Aftershock wants it. But there is that creep wave in the way. Oh, the perfect timing baby coming soon. I'm just, like, waiting. There it goes, hookshot in on a pop him right there, and then there's going to be, of course, the Cogs as well on top of that, the Crystal Nova. There's going to be the Chain Frost hitting, but that Living Armor taking up a lot of damage. Zerg 2 is going to take up the brunt of it, and they were ready for that. Insight was ready for that hookshot. They knew that it was kind of a bait a little bit, but at the same time, 
Uh, now in the mid lane, you can see Sven just trying to push in here. Spell was stolen. Should be Stormhammer, or at least Warcry. No, it is a Stormhammer there, so they have that stun going for them. And they might have missed their opportunity to Roche now. However, that ward should be going down on the Dire side very, very soon. Yeah, you see there. But now they just want to go. There's going to throw a Warcry. Alacrity as well. They want to break the base. Tier 3, God Strength. Now they're going to chase Dive right after Plock, doing some Stormhammer. Just absolutely going to town. David uses Stormhammer. There it goes. Deeks is going to take it. He's going to get a double kill for fullback right now. SS in some trouble. Overgrowth on Poppin. He's cogged up as well. Poppin taking a lot of damage. Reverse Polarity on to 2. Yule Scepter as well on top of that. Now a triple kill for the Sven. Moon... He's got to get out of there right now, and GG is called for the Stormbolt. Is it going to be an Ultra Kill? Yes, Ultra Kill for fullback right now. He needs one more, but and it's going to have to be a well dive if he wants that. And it looks like he's going to go right in. No, he's thinking about it, and it's not going to happen. He is going to go down with an Ultra Kill, but Pain International, they'll take it. And in sight, they lose another one, unfortunately, for them. And, and that lineup just did not work for them. And it's a lineup that we talked about. Could have been good a few months ago, but this lineup coming out from Pain International, a little bit... Uh, out of the ordinary, but they win with it nonetheless. Of course, Tree and Protector providing a lot of the bonus uh, help on the team, and you got to give it up for the Crystal Maiden as well. So, great yeah, game. Crystal Maiden phenomenal game ends up 0-3 and 9, but that doesn't really represent what she created for her team. And DDX Invoker too strong. I mean, this was just Pain International showing that they outclass Insight at least by a little margin, but uh, it certainly was one-sided and. Insights picks definitely not exactly where you want them to be, but their play wasn't there either. It's not like the picks were the only thing holding them back. You could mm. see they were just a step behind. Yeah. And uh, that's going to do it for us right now. We are going to jump into another game. Uh, so it looks like Arctic versus TM is uh, postponing. So we will get into the next game, which I believe is Arctic versus Insight, which will be the last game of the night, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you follow us on the American Dota League, which is at America Dota on Twitter, twitch.tv slash America Dota League. Uh, with me tonight is NY John. You can follow him at twitter.com slash NY John TV. And uh, any shout outs or anything like that before we head into the final game? Um, shout out to the ADL. Be sure to purchase up your ticket because it's awesome. And you get to watch the first person's perspective. How often do we see Invoker nowadays? Being able to get in game and watch DDX's Invoker is a really good way of learning how to play the hero in the current 6.78 state of the game because it's different from what it used to be. Absolutely. It definitely is. And uh, I gotta, I gotta say, yeah. Please, 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 pick up a ticket. Always fun to watch in game. That being said, we're gonna jump into the next game in just a moment. If you guys like my casting, my name is Mont. You can follow me at Twitter.com/slash/Mont32. We'll be doing some more casting for you guys in the future. But for now, we're gonna jump into the next game in just a moment. So sit tight, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> 